Yes, sir. Ah, yes. So let's start now. So dear all plant pathology lovers and crop protection uh, scientists and students. So just now we have seen on the screen very large number of participation we have received so far to party. So it's very good sign for all of us. So such a large number of participation really encourages us to go for the better uh, this uh, organization of some of the uh, talk, meeting, seminars uh, like this. So now in the webinar series of uh, today's program, so the second talk will be delivered by Dr. Dilip Kumar Ghosh. He is from uh, Nagpur Citrus Research Center. So we know that Dr. Dilip Kumar Ghosh is a renowned biologist, but he will be dealing with the molecular diagnostics for the citrus uh, disease management, special reference to the virus and virus like disease, uh, disease, disease uh, diagnosis, uh, detection. Uh, instead of uh, lingering further, so I will request our general president, Dr. Narendra uh, Gade, to introduce the speaker, Dr. Ghosh. So, Dr. Gade, please. Yeah, yeah. Good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, good morning, Dr. D.K. Ghosh and uh, good morning, good morning. all the IPCC Council, uh, especially Dr. Gogai and Dr. Kalyan Mandal and Dr. Raju. So, uh, Dr. Dilip K. Ghosh, it is, uh, he is supposed to be an authority of citrus virology in India, having a tremendous, uh, uh, actually a very scientific uh, data and work on citrus uh, virology and we had a very good opportunity to hear him on this particular topic and it will be, I, I think it will be very beneficial for the budding scientists who wanted to work in citrus uh, actually, particularly and the students also. So presently he's working as a principal scientist at CCIR Nagpur, a well-known institute. Now it has got a, a good recognition and uh, he's working as a citrus virologist, uh, if I know well, uh, in 1993, he joined as a uh, scientist over there, and from right from 25 years, he's working as a, a scientist at uh, CCIR Nagpur. Particularly, he has an opportunity to visit many more countries as an advisor. He's working as a FPO consultant at Nepal and uh, Bhutan, and also visited for his scientific contribution to China, USA, then Vietnam, and Thailand, and Nepal, and Bhutan. So, so many countries he has visited and given his uh, just uh, whatever the knowledge he had and he has shared his virology, citrus virological views with these countries and these countries has taken an opportunity to work with him. So he is a recipient of a very prestigious uh, award that is uh, J.F. Dastur Memorial Award last year uh, given by these I, uh, IPS. And he is also a fellow of uh, different societies. There are four societies where he got a fellow of those societies. Uh, he had an opportunity to become an organizing secretary for National Symposium of IPS and different societies. And uh, particularly, he has guided uh, seven PhD students. And uh, after completion of this PhD, of those students, uh, they got an opportunity to become a scientist and also got an academic jobs. So all the students, they got a very lucrative job in his uh, guidance. Uh, he has to credit uh, 60 research paper and uh, those papers are very, very well-known papers in international and national journals of repute. Uh, he wrote 16 book chapters and two books and uh, tremendous uh, accessions, uh, near about 500 NCBI accessions with his credit. Uh, just now he has filed one US patent uh, for this virological work and to our knowledge he becomes a PI of many more projects uh, there are so many projects he handle uh, externally funded by ICAR then DBT DST then DSV NHM and all these funding agencies they they go they gave him a projects and he has successfully handled those projects and uh, this is the, the contribution what we have seen with this 60 research paper uh, because of these uh, externally funded projects and the students have got an opportunity to work with him. 
he is a member of various committees uh, and he is also a guide for this icr projects as well as he is also on the committees of uh, state agriculture <clears throat> uh, he has conducted uh, many more trainings and uh, more importantly the trainings for uh, international students uh, and the international scientists also uh, lab trainings and lab to land programs he has just implemented uh, so uh, this personality is uh, actually i said that he is now a authority of the citrus virology there are very few uh, citrus virologists in india and he is one of the best uh, citrus uh, virologist i ever interacted with him and i was associated with him right from his joining so he is my good friend and uh, thank you dr dilip ghosh uh, you have given us the time to this lecture and i request you to please put it for your this uh, lecture thank you very much yes sir uh hello thanks professor gade for your kind words which one make it make into slide yeah. yeah and now the slide is visible now yeah yeah visible yeah okay yes. okay uh, thanks dr gade for your kind words yeah Uh, members of the executive council of indian phytopathological society new delhi uh, dr robin gogoi secretary dr kollan mandal uh, joint secretary dr gujia treasurer dr gade zonal president and dr washful a zonal councilor mr rajkumar is an important pillar of the society's uh, office in new delhi all other distinguished participants and student friends who are attending today's national webinar being conducted by the society as a part of celebration of international year of uh, plant, plant health 2020 uh, good morning to all of you uh, let me first thank the organizer for uh, inviting me to deliver a lecture on recent trends in developing molecular diagnostics of virus and virus like pathogens of citrus Uh, as i told that uh, there are many student participants who are attending uh, this webinar so in my presentation i'll cover uh, briefly about basic information about indian citrus industry as well as citrus viruses on 14th of july first day of this webinar series my good friend dr r silvarajan from nrc banana an eminent plant virologist He has delivered an excellent lecture, highlighting details about plant virus diagnostics. And truly, Dr. Silvarajan has made my job a bit easier today. I will avoid as much as possible repetition of what Dr. Silvarajan has already spoken. I will particularly cover conventional as well as different molecular diagnostic tools being used for detection of citrus viruses. with an emphasis on pcr real time pcr lamp and rpa based diagnostics developed at our institute further i'll also talk about what being done in our institute regarding application of these diagnostic tools for identification characterization and management of citrus uh, citrus pathogen and at the end apart from disease diagnostics in couple of slides i'll cover about research activity in a in a completely new area that we are doing in collaboration with our colleagues from iit roorkee before i finally conclude as you know citrus is the third most important fruit crop in india after banana and mango and plays an important role in the economy of the country if we see the global scenario india ranks third after china and brazil in terms of total production of about 10.10 million tons from an estimated area of about um, 1.3 million hectare loose skin mandarin that is citrus reticulator which consists of nagpur mandarin khasi mandarin kurg mandarin kinno mandarin darjeeling mandarin etc is the predominant cultivar which constitutes about 
43% of the total citrus production. It is followed by sweet or exotic citrus sinensis, which includes Mosambi, Sadgudi, Malta, Jaffa, Hamlin, Valencia, pineapple, etc. That constitutes about 20%, 25%. Similarly, lime and lemon group that constitutes around 25%, and rest like fruits like grapefruit and pamelo, it co it constitutes around 7% of the total citrus production in India. Among different citrus states, where citrus is commercially grown, major share goes to Maharashtra, undivided Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Punjab. If we see from the north, major areas of Kindo Mandarin is Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan. The Nagpur Mandarin is in Vidarbha region of Maharashtra, parts of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. Mosambi in Marathwara region of Maharashtra, Sabgudi and Andhra Pradesh. Kur Mandarin in Karnataka, parts of Tamil Nadu, Kashi Mandarin in the northeastern states, acid lime in few districts of Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Bihar, etc. Though there are several fold increase in area under citrus cultivation as well as total citrus production in India uh, during the last five decades, incidentally, national productivity that is yield per hectare remains almost static. That is about 10 to 11 ton per hectare as compared to about 28 to 30 ton per hectare in developed countries like US Brazil. One of the main reasons behind this poor situation is the infection caused by several virus and virus like pathogens that affect citrus plant health, productivity, fruit quality, and that finally cause citrus decline. Once you look back at the developments in the discipline of plant virology, during last one century, there is a quantum jump in the number of identified plant viruses, which was just 89 during 1939, and today it is more than 2000. The rapid emergence of new plant viruses are the combined effect of evolution due to recombination, mutation, selection, gene flow, transboundary movement of the plant viruses along the planting material, changes in the cropping pattern, climate change, etc. This has resulted is in increased interest among scientists and policy makers on plant virus research, which eventually has led to the development of rapid, sensitive, and robust diagnostic tools for virus detection. If you see the pathogen status in horticulture crops, nearly 60% of the total infection is attributed towards virus, uh, viroid, and, and phytoplasma, all systemic pathogens against which there is virtually no chemical control is available. This is really an alarming situation, particularly in any vegetatively propagated horticulture crops, whether it is citrus, banana, or tuber crop, or so on. There are huge diversity among plant viruses. It may be of different sizes, maybe flexures, isometric, rod, bullet separate. Genome may be either DNA or RNA, either single standard or double standard, either positive sense or negative sense, either undivided or divided into two or more. <clears throat> plant virus, uh, now the question is the, the why, why plant virus diagnostics? To understand the etiology of disease, that is to know the type of virus involved, which is the first step towards disease management. To ensure the crop biosecurity, to, to ensure the production of pathogen free planting material, to assist in crop breeding program to develop resistant varieties, to stop introduction of new viruses along with the planting material being imported from other countries, to ensure export promotion. I know my friend and senior colleague, Dr. M. Krishna Reddy from IIHR Bangalore. He's doing a lot of work in this aspect that helps in exporting many agri horticultural products from India to other countries. Prediction of disease epidemics is another area that is needed for virus diagnostics to understand the evolutionary background and finally to devise suitable management strategies. There are numerous diagnostic tools that is being used for plant virus detection, starting from symptomolo symptomatology to microarray techniques. 
having different sensitivity in terms of the detection limits. All these techniques have their own advantages and limitations. Choice of a technique that can be used by a scientist depends on the type of experiment being conducted, availability of resources that includes equipment and expertise, et cetera. Uh, now I'll talk about the citrus viruses, which is actually an array of plant pathogens that includes at least six different groups of plant viruses. So this is Clostero, Colimo, Flexi, Bromo, Aspiriviridae, Kitaviridae, et cetera. At least five uh, different uh, plant viroids, including citrus exocortis. Four different types of prokaryotes, namely Xylella, that causes a highly damaging citrus variegated chlorosis disease in Brazil. A, spirop a spiroplasma causing citrus stubborn disease in USA and Mediterranean region. Fortunately, so far, both these pathogens are not present in our country. Also phytoplasma belonging to at least different, uh, five different groups that causing diverse symptoms on different citrus cultivars. And then finally, three different species of phloem inhibited candidatus liberibacter species that causes citrus greening disease, uh, along with many other uh, diseases whose etiology is still unknown. In India, there are reports of about 16 such virus and virus like pathogens to infect citrus. Among these pathogens, five most important diseases that cause significant crop loss that includes tristeza, greening, ring spot, uh, yellow mosaic, and exocortis. Either as a single infection or as a mixed infection, these pathogens play a significant role to cause citrus decline in India. Though you can see an excellent symptoms here, incidentally in the field condition, you may not be able to see such nice symptoms. The reasons in a perennial woody plant like citrus, the concentration of these pathogens remain low, unevenly distributed throughout the canopy, sometimes more in a particular plant part, say in root, than other parts like twigs. And moreover, symptom excretion depends on type of citrus cultivars, whether it is mandarin or musumbi or lime that is infected, type of the virus and the strain associated, prevailing environmental conditions. Therefore, there is a need for developing proper diagnostic tools. Among these five major citrus pathogens, Tristigia, Greening, and Exocortis. These are present throughout the globe and in all citrus growing regions of India as well. However, both ring spot and Eolo mosaic is restricted only in India. During 1988 to 90, Professor Y.H. Alavath from IRI, New Delhi, and my PhD supervisor first reported about these two new citrus diseases. Professor Alavak, along with his students like Dr. H. Badgi, R. P. Pant, B. 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 Reddy, Hua, etc., they made detailed study of these two new diseases. Before Professor Vaish Alavak, during 60s to 70s, his teachers and colleagues like Professor S. Pirai Chodhuri, Professor Kapoor, Professor Nariani, Professor Nagpal, Professor Vasudeva, Professor G.S. Reddy, Professor Ken Bhagavati, and many others work extensively to establish the association of CTB and citrus greening with citrus dieback problem in India. And they made the strong foundation of citrus virus research in our country. I remember Dr. Padma Ramchandan at IRI along with Professor Ayalavath, she worked extensively on citrus viroids. Similarly, Professor Indonil Dashgupta from Delhi University South Campus, Professor Sai Gopal from SB University Tirupati, Dr. K. Gopal from Citrus Research Station Tirupati, they also did excellent work on citrus yellow mosaic disease. After the superannuation of Professor Ayalavath from IRI, Professor V.K. Bharanwal and Dr. Kajal Vishwas my friend and collaborator, they are continuing very good research on citrus viruses at IRI. Even though in past few decades, there have been 
tremendous improvement in plant virus detection by sophisticated molecular diagnostic tools like pcr real time pcr that certainly has many advantages in terms of sensitivity robustness and speed conventional biological indexing still remains a very very valuable and useful tool for citrus virus diagnosis as well as virus culture maintenance raising a particular indicator of citrus plant inside insect free skin house graft inoculation to test samples on respective indicator plant maintaining these inoculated plants either in low or in high temperature depending on the pathogen involved recording of specific symptom on indicator plant these are the different steps involved in biodiagnosis just to give you an example ctb infection on acidlam indicator plant or citrus greening on musumi indicator plant once they are kept in low temperature it may take one or two months for symptom expression on graft inoculated indicator plant on the other hand citrus blight infection on valencia sweet orange indicator plant it take more than 2 years to develop characteristic symptoms cachexia viroid may take 1 to 2 year to develop gumming symptom on the graft union of indicator plant similarly indian citrus ring spot virus it takes only 8 to 10 days to develop symptom expression in french bean by sap inoculation the landmark discovery of polymerase chain reaction pcr by american biochemist professor carey mullis in mid 80s for which he subsequently received nobel prize in chemistry has made revolution in detection of plant pathogens infecting human animal and plants three steps of denaturation annealing and extension of target dna that results in production of millions of its copy that is visualized by uh, gel electrophoresis subsequently several types of pcr like immunocapture pcr or multiplex pcr that have been developed since then these pcr based diagnostics are being used routinely in all laboratories throughout the globe in our lab in nagpur we have also developed pcr based detection of ctb greening mosaic ring spot and exocortis Uh, viroid citrus tisticha virus which is widely prevalent in all citrus growing regions and in all citrus commercial cultivars comes under the genus clostridovirus and family for clostridovirid it is transmitted through vegetative propagation as well as by different aphid species like toxoplera citricida or aphis gossypii there are numerous biological strains that produce different symptoms like stem pitting vein clearing stunting vein corking chlorosis cupping of the entire leaf and finally so or slow or quick decline the rna of this genome consists of 12 open reading frames that potentially encodes at least 19 proteins rf 1a and rf b that is located in the 5 prime half end that encodes replication related protein and translated from genomic rna there are about 40 to 70% sequence identity in this region and therefore it is a good candidate for very very big study of ct isolates on the other hand what if 2 to 11 that is located in three dust half end that includes coat protein gene p25 rna binding protein gene p23 etc and this region is relatively conserved about it has about 90% identity and therefore it is a good candidate for ctb detection either by pcr or real time pcr or by lamp or rpa technique here we have developed sensitive and robust pcr based detection of ctb targeting both coat protein gene as well as uh, rna binding protein gene that amplifies the product that gives a product size of around 672 and 530 base pair respectively citrus uh for conserve uh, for uh, PC, pcr detection of citrus pathogen greening is another very destructive disease it is caused by candidatus liberobacter aseaticus and transmitted by ciliate vectors t 
till the year 2005 this disease was restricted to asian and african countries during 2004 and 5 this disease was restricted uh, was reported from us and brazil and two major citrus producing countries in the world and the disease has virtually threatened the 10 billion dollar us uh, citrus industry of only florida state different types of greening symptoms that can be produced by this pathogen that's that consists of yellow mottling vein yellowing green island leaf yellowing symptoms and fruits and currently there is no control against this uh, disease the different types uh, species of this candidatus liberobacter asiaticus africanus and americanus they are they are reported to cause this disease and among these three species candidatus liberobacter asiaticus is the most prevalent in indian subcontinent conserved genomic loci such as 16s ribosomal dna and beta operon of ribosomal protein gene that was used to design primers for for pcr detection of pathogen both in infected plant as well as in seeded vectors and these are being used routinely for diagnosis of citrus greening disease citrus yellow mosaic disease so far restricted only in india initially it was reported from in the south from sadbudi sweet orange and acid lime in pamelo now we find it is central part of india this virus such as mosaic uh, beta virus is a non velar vasiliform virus about 130 to 130 nanometer in size and it has a double stranded dna genome and in this case we have standardized pcr based detection of this pathogen targeting the ora3 regions of this virus again for citrus rick spot virus which is widely prevalent in kindo mandarin growing regions of north and north to north uh, west of our country this is caused by indian citrus rick spot virus is a member of flexibility family and mandarin virus genus and the virus has a size of 650 to 30 nanometer and that contains around single stranded rna of 7.5 kb genome and it has a six warrants and here we have standardized uh, rt pcr technique for detection of this uh, indian citrus ring spot virus uh, targeting the coat protein uh, region citrus exocortis viroid which is again uh, that that gives a very very clear classical bark scaling symptom bark scaling symptom particularly on very susceptible host stocks like rank pull lime and trifoliate and it is transmissible to other guiana or orencia and petunia and tomato plants and this type of symptoms you can see you can in the field condition uh, if the it's susceptible to stocks like rank pull lime or trifoliate orange here also we have standardized uh, rt pcr technique for detection of this exocortis viride for most of the pcr assays there is an involvement of either multi step dna isolation protocol or use of expensive commercial kit and it is also not possible or practical to rapidly index uh, large scale field or nursery samples for pathogen testing therefore a simple sensitive and broad spectrum assay is required for the detection of citrus pathogen from large number of field samples following dna isolation protocol reported by dr barwal in 2007 with little modification we have also used and develop nitrocellulose membrane based nucleic acid extraction protocol uh, for for target pathogens like citrus mosaic bandana virus and candidatus liberobacter etc both in simplex as well as duplex pcr technique amplification with dna template prepared with membrane based method was found is very comparable with other tested techniques advantages of this technique is it is very simple it does not require any liquid nitrogen and can be done on sample collection site itself if needed and it is found good for short term storage and specially the spotted ncm membrane can be transported to the places far away from the collection site and it is cheap and sensitive and it can be used for a large scale routing indexing program in the field condition many a times more than one pathogen are involved are in are can cause infection on citrus 
in this case you can find that there is a mixed infection of citrus mosaic bantavirus as well as citrus uh, greening bacteria in this slide you can see that this flexor ctb along with this this uh, bullets of uh, bantavirus particle this is a very common in in a field condition in our lab we have standardized duplex pcr technique for detection of ctb and citrus mosaic bantavirus for detection of citrus mosaic along with candidatus libidobacterius asiaticus that causes citrus greening disease we have also developed a duplex pcr for detection of ctb and greening and also ctb and indian ring spot virus these are the duplex pcr now we are focusing to multi to develop uh, multiplex uh, multiplex uh, multiplexing of this so that maybe three or four pathogen uh, can be detected in a single swab real time pcr is a highly sensitive and reliable quantitative method for pathogen detection as well as as well as gene expression analysis here progress of a reaction is monitored in real time and there is no need for post pcr steps like gel electrophoresis and gel documentation to see the final amplified product there are different chemistry involved in real time pcr based on detect based detection the most commonly used chemistry included the cyber cyber green which binds to the double stranded dna and sequence specific tackman probes as compared to cyber green technique the tackman probe based technique is more sensitive and specific but it is bit expensive in our lab we have developed a real time pcr based detection of citrus mosaic bantavirus citrus greening bacterium ctb as well as indian citrus ring spot virus citrus mosaic bantavirus is a, as a quarantine pathogen as i as i told earlier and is geographically restricted only only in india to prevent unintentional movement of the virus with, with within and outside india and to facilitate trade a sensitive and validated diagnostic tool was needed here we have developed a cyber green based real time pcr technique to detect and quantify citrus mosaic bantavirus virus in different tissues of infected mosaic plant we have also compared its sensitivity to conventional pcr protocol primers were designed to recognize the portion of the viral capsid protein gene different tissues from infected plants like feeder root shoot tips leaves displaying typical mosaic symptom asymptomatic leaves thrones etc we tested and the highest concentration occurred in the feeder roots followed by symptomatic leaf here we have standardized the tackman based real time pcr assay for detection of candidatus liberbacter asiatic as that has that causes uh, the citrus greening disease in this standardized technique the association between ct value and dna quantity quantities were robust with, co with correlation coefficient of 0.99 for the primers and 0.99 with cox uh, primer despite une uneven distribution of the bacterium in the infected plant we are able to detect abundant amounts of the bacterium that shows the low ct value after standardization of the protocol that is annealing temperature and extension time the pathogen detection limit of the standardized qpcr assay was uh, was uh, less than 12.5 pentogram of total dna from hlb infected plant and this information we have published in in plos 1 loop mediated isothermal amplification is a is a noble diagnostic technique and it is a good alternative to pcr technique this was originally reported by notomi et al in 2000 and so far almost 3000 nearly 3000 articles have been published on lamp technique and this is based on the bst dna polymerase and this technique is isothermal nucleic acid amplification technique and it do not require any special reagent or sophisticated equipment four different primers which specifically recognized six different regions of the target that is being used 
and the final lamp product can be visualized either by real time detection or by fluorescent uh, by adding fluorescent dye or by developing a lateral flow dipstick and these are the salient features of lamp tin it is very rapid cost effective this happens in isothermal condition no no denaturation is needed it is very simple and this is basic and it can be combined with reverse transcription step to allow the detection of the rna pathogen here in our lab in nagpur we have developed lamp based detection of ctb citrus greening and indian citrus ring spot virus as i told you lamp is a recent addition in the list of diagnostic techniques in this case we have designed a set of six primers that we have identified from 16s ribosomal dna of candidatus liberobacter asiaticus to test the pathogen both in infected plants as well as in in seeded vectors an amplification was optimized at 65 degree centigrade temperature for 60 minutes and the final amp final amplified product was observed observed as as intense green color upon staining with cyber green and this can be visualized both by naked eyes as well as under under uv also we checked the lamp product in in gel electrophoresis that displayed a character, characteristic ladder like bending pattern and also we have checked by normal pcr the limitation of this technique it is highly sensitive to contamination that that we agree but as an alternative to pcr it may be used in diagnostic centers of remote places having limited facilities here we have standardized rt lamp based detection of citrus tisticha virus a set of four primers identified from the code protein gene of ctb that have been used to develop this lamp technique an additional step of reverse transcriptase was added to convert viral genomic rna into cdna amplification was optimized at 65 degree centigrade for 60 minutes and the final amplified product final amplified product was observed, observed as intense green color upon staining with cyber green and this can be visualized by naked eyes as well as under uv light also it checked the electro product lamp product on electrophoresis that displayed characteristic ladder like band and also detected by uh, by normal pcr technique indian citrus ring spot virus as i told you it is a serious problem particularly in 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 kindo mandarin orchards uh, of punjab uh, haryana and rajasthan this conspicuous the ring like symptoms like mottling and irregular chlorotic pattern symptoms are mostly evident on mature leaves and sometimes on fruits as well sometimes on fruits as well uh, during winter months here we have developed highly sensitive uh, rt lamp reaction that was performed at 63 degree centigrade temperature for for 75 minute the characteristic a ladder like band was observed on agar gel the specificity of this developed technique was determined by comparing amplification with other major citrus pathogen and the sensitivity of technique was up to 100 times greater than rtbcr and last week this manuscript uh, that we communicated a couple of months earlier and last week only this manuscript has been accepted for publication in in, in plant disease there is a uh, there are this is a comparative analysis of pcr and lamp based diagnostics in case of thermal pcr you know that uh, is repeated heating and cooling but in that in case it is an alt isothermal amplification it, in case of pcr needs only two primers here we need to four to six primers and lamp is as compared to pcr it is very simple in in inexpensive technique and this is also tolerant to sample matrix inhibitors and now we'll talk about uh, rpa technique that is recombinase polymerase based amplification technique it is a very noble and isothermal reaction technique 
it as alternative to PCR, and very recently it has been developed. This can be carried out at 37 to 40 degrees centigrade, and the final result can be observed in, in 20 to 30 minutes time. It can detect RNA as well as the DNA pathogen, and it, it really does not require any expensive thermal cyclase. Visualization of the RPA technique, it can be done through agarogel electrophoresis or fluorescent detection or, or lateral coassay. And so far in about, about more than 250 articles has been published on RPA technique. And the reagent are available in dried format, format and then hence can be used in on site. And it can be in the future, is the potential that it, it can be useful for the farmers, nursery men, in mobile pan pathology laboratories and in Bardoon certification program and quarantine. Now the question is why we, we need to recommend a RPA based technique. This is a lot of advantages like speed, specificity, sensitivity, low temperature operation, then sample tolerance to different inhibitors, then broad applicability and multiplexing is also possible here and it is low cost. And these are the different advantages of using RPA technique. And these are the basic principles of RPA technique and this uh, recombinage and is a couple of prime uh, pairing primers and then SSB that is single standard DNA binding protein that stabilize the displaced DNA strand and then strand displacement program. There is no requirement of melting temperature for reaction because here the primer annealing and elongation are enzyme mediated. It's not temperature treatment. These are the different detection modes of RPA technique. It can be either by agarose gel or it can be monitored in real time using instrument or even without equipment. We can, we can monitor the product directly on lateral flow strips. And here we have, we have developed the RPA based detection technique for detection of Candidatus liberobacter aciaticus that causes uh, citrus uh, greening disease. Very recently, uh, we did this work. And in this technique, in this technique that uh, we have we have we have used primers and probes that was that was designed using fixed amplification information and six different uh, primers we have uh, we have used that. And here we have standardized. Initially, we work for optimizing the reaction time, uh, time starting from uh, zero to 40 minutes and best amplification we got in 30 minutes. And as far as the optimum reaction temperature, we started from 20 degree to up to 42 degree centigrade mm -hmm. and we got best result in, in 38 degree centigrade temperature. Here also we have tested its specificity and uh, sensitivity. And finally found that the detection limit of the uh, RPA LFA is around less than one picogram of the total DNA and is comparatively is greater than the detection limit of conventional PCA technique. We have also developed the RPA based technique for detection of citrus tissue virus. Currently used detection methods are highly, highly sensitive but time consuming and labor intensive and it require expensive instruments. RTA, RT, RPA standardized to amplify the code protein gene of CTB and detect double labeled amplicons on a sandwich immunoassay by designing specific labeled primer pairs. And assay was optimized for temperature and reaction time using purified cDNA and viral RNA as template. And we got the best results at isothermal temperature of 40 degrees centigrade within 15 to 20 minutes time. And the sensitivity of this developed technique was also compared with other detection technique like conventional PCR and real-time PCR. And then <clears throat> RTRPA LFICA was able to detect uh, less than 1.4 picogram of the RNA when compared, when converted to cDNA and used as a template. This, this is about RPA uh, technique for detection of CTB. But this, all these techniques, these have certain limitations because there is no software available to design RPA primers and probes 
and consequently screening of several IP primers and probe set is required to choose optimal. These are the couple of limitations of this uh, of this of this technique. And as far as the comparison of different diagnostic techniques like PCR, LAMP, and RPA technique, we have already discussed that the LAMP technique. Uh, it can be uh, done on 60 to 60 by 20 uh, degree centigrade temperature. And in case of RP, it is less temperature. And time also requirement as compared to PCR, both LAMP and RP technique less time, less time. And number of primers requirement in case of PCR, it is two. And here it is four to six, here it is only two. These are the uh, different uh, comparison of the three different techniques that is PCR, LAMP and RP technique. These are the different examples apart from citrus pathogens. These are the different DNA pathogens in infected different is with this plant or animal. Uh, these are the different examples, the work done by other workers throughout the, throughout the world. And these are the different examples of RPA technique that are used to detect RNA pathogen uh, infecting different, different hosts. Now I'll talk about, now this is all about the different diagnostic techniques. Now I'll speak give, uh, about the application part. I'll give some of the examples of these different diagnostic techniques that have been used for uh, identification of new diseases and then characterization of uh, new pathogens, existing pathogens, and as well as the management of citrus disease management. In case of citrus, the as you know that the plant, citrus plant is infected by the phytoplasma of at least five different groups. Which is bloom phytoplasma? It was initially reported from Oman in, in 1975 by Oman, by Bovetol. And this disease was later reported from UAE and Iran, which is caused by candidatus phytoplasma or in Sibolia, belonging to uh, 16 SR2 groups. In India, Phytoplasma induced which is bloom and multiple sprouting disease was, was reported. We found that. And based on our nested PCR detection and subsequent analysis of the 1.2 KB DNA of the, of the 60 days uh, DNA that is amplified product, we, we identified that the phytoplasma that is causing the which is bloom disease in India, it belongs to 16 days coating group. Recently, phytoplasma infection has also been reported uh, that can cause a symptom that is very similar to, similar to uh, citrus greening disease. And this has been reported from Brazil, China, and Pakistan. And we found that uh, in, in Brazil and China, this greening-like symptom that is caused apart from Candidatus liberobacter aceticus, the workers from Brazil, they told that in greening like symptom, 16 SR, the phytoplasma belonging to 16 SR, 19 group, that is PGNP, which is boom, boom, the group that is associated with that. In China, there is a report that, that with greening like symptom, there's involvement of a phytoplasma that belongs to 1B, 1B SR, that, called, that is Asteriolus group. In India, we find that with a couple of samples we tested that showing HLB like symptoms in citrus grandis, that is Pramelo. We, we, we characterized that phytoplasma and we, below, we, we concluded that uh, this is this phytoplasma causing green LA symptoms belongs to 16 SR14 group. And now we'll talk about the characterization of different citrus pathogen. Initially, the characterization of citrus pathogens were based, initially it was based on the G, uh, sequence difference in 16 SR and 16 S 23 years ribosomal DNA regions. But after the, after the complete report of uh, uh, the availability of the full genome sequences of citrus greening in 2009 by Duan et al., the new, new target site was taken to characterize the different uh, citrus isol uh, greening isolates. And immediately, two Two paper came, one from uh, published in Phytopathology, one from China that reported the, the greening isolates prevalent in China as well as in Florida. That was the first paper in Phytopathology by, by Chen et al. And then 
Uh, then we published that paper in phytopathology where we characterized about 1881 Indian populations of, uh, of candidates liver vector acid. Afterwards, uh, and very recently, uh, there is a development of targeting another locus that is Clevisia 05610. Apart from Clevisia 01645, this is another target that was also now being used by different workers to characterize uh, different CL isolates. And very recently, we have characterized 16 isolates on, uh, on 16 isolates from Bhutan that we have characterized. This is all about the greening isolates characterization. We have also characterized the, the citrus yellow mosaic virus that is present only in our country. And similarly, based on core protein gene, as well as the five prime and five prime warrior, uh, we have characterized the different CTB isolates. I'm not going to speak details about all this, our work, but just as an example, I'll, I'll speak only about these two, two work uh, on this on HLB as well as uh, on citrus mosaic. Uh, in, this, in this work, we, we took about 81 isolates of citrus greening. And based on the, this is the tandem repeat number present in the a uh, hypervariable region that is Cleversia 01645. Based on the number of uh, tandem repeats present in that region, we have classified the 81 isolates of candidatus liver vector acetic as present in our country in four different groups. This is TRN below five, TRN five to 10, TRN 10 to 15, and TRN more than 15. And we found that Indian population of candidatus liver vector acetic acid is more drivers than the populations of Florida as well as in China. Here, majority belongs to TRN number 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Whereas in China and US, it is TRN 5 and TRN 7. Additionally, in, our, in the Indian population, we have two more, that is TRN 2 and TRN 17 that is present in our country. Incidentally, the isolates of Northeast India, where TRN 6 and 7 is present, that is 53% of the isolates, and this is the major isolates. Uh, this TRN6 and present is in China. And incidentally, this, this region is nearer to China. We found that, that uh, this is around in this isolate, this TRN6 and 7 in Northeast, it is very similar to the Chinese isolates. And this is about the characterization of isolates of citrus mosaic by the virus. And based on the symptoms developed in different indicator plants, as well as the, the sequence variation in WADF3, as well as in intergenic region, we classified that this strain, we have, we have concluded that two different strains of, of the citrus mosaic badna virus is present in our country. And now I'll talk about the management aspect, application of, of uh, the diagnostic techniques for as far as the management is concerned. As you know that the citrus screening the pathogen is restricted in the in the in the phloem set of the infected plant. This is highly restricted, and there is virtually no chemical control uh, against this pathogen. US albumin protein, which is a plant-based protein, originated isolated from pumpkin seeds, having a molecular weight about 12.5 kilo dantam, and it has an antifungal and antibacterial property, and it is heat stable. It is stable at around 90 degrees centigrade temperature, water soluble, and this TS albumin protein, it has serine protease activity. So we have used TS albumin protein in combination with nano zinc oxide, which is around, which has around four nanometer diameter and different combination of these two compounds. We have used it and injected it in 30 days interval in under screen house condition. And we found that it's very good inhibition of this product. Uh, up to 120 days, we found that, and this information uh, recently have published in, in, in PLOS one. And in this experiment, we have the collaboration with uh, Professor A.K. Sarma from IIT Rurki and Professor Swadesh Mukul Chantra from University of Central Florida. These are the two persons with whom we worked on this aspect. And as far as the, again, as far as the application of diagnostic techniques for production of a disease-free planting material. Here, we are using successfully our different diagnostic tools for implementing citrus value certification program. What we are doing, 
initially we are identifying horticulturally superior candidates of nagpur mandarin or sweet orange or musumbi and then we are taking those samples from those horticulturally superior plants and using our developed diagnostic tools to test those horticulturally superior plants say out of 100 plants which is horticulturally superior if we if we get say around 30 plants which are really free from all these major pathogens those plants we are using as a mother plant from which we are taking cyan material for routine propagation and we, we are raising the root stocks of rafflem and rangpur lime in sterile condition within the insect free condition and then we are going for routine commercial propagation and in last 20 years more than 40 lakhs virus free certified planting material we have developed at our institute and a team of scientists are working at our institute and we have generated uh, more than 6 crores rupees uh, resources for for the for the center out of sale of this planting material and this is i am nearer to the end of my topic and as i promised that before uh, along with uh, along with the diagnostics some of the other areas of work that we are doing uh, in collaboration with iit roorkee and as you know as i told that cla uh, this is candidates diverbector uh, this is multiplying in two different environments that is one is in in the foam tissue of the infected plant as well as the salivary gland of the of the ciliate vectors there are many essential proteins of the pathogen like protease oxidative stress enzyme abc transporter protein secre secreted virulence factor solute binding protein sugar metabol enzymes etc that is essential by the bacteria to survive in two different environments till the year 2012 we find that apart from bioinformatic analysis not much work was done on cla protein after the availability of full genome sequencing in 2009 uh, the proteome analysis became available and they, that reveals a lot of potential target molecules accordingly uh, for last 8 years since 2012 along with our collaborators of iit rurki we we took uh, experiments regarding cloning expression on purification of different uh, candidates diverbector asiatic as proteins involved in survival infection then its biochemical and biophysical characterization of these proteins and understanding the structure function relationship and finally to to identify to develop inhibitor molecules uh, that uh, that can be target that can be used as a target uh, whether it can be a drug molecule or protein area we wanted to work in collaboration with iit roorkee and last eight years we are working with the fund support from early uh, our srf working in this project they are also visiting this they are lab and working for 3 4 weeks together and this has uh, this is for example sumit sumit bose he was working as a srf in this project and uh, similarly other srfs are working that project and we have got very good information we have generated out of the work of this of the this project i'll just quickly move this because time is uh, passing and these are the different uh, studies we did in collaboration with iit roorkee and now i'll near to my end of the presentation that we have also do organize a different training programs at our at our institute uh, both for the participants for working within the country like state agriculture universities or kbks and meanwhile we have uh, we have organized six national level training program for the participants from ACUs, KBKs, and private company, and also we have organized three international training program from the participants of Nepal, Bhutan, and Oman. And this is only two a few recent work that has been developed in other countries. Very recently, we we found that this is a work from University of Florida. They have used that oak leaf extract that they claim that it displays a Curative effects against citrus gaining pathogen. This is a very recent publication, in 2020 only, and only a couple of weeks back we find that similar what type of work from University of California, California Riverside. The professor Jin he has identified the gene uh, that is in the finger line that causes that immunity that he claims that extracted it 
to create an antibiotic that has killed the disease in young citrus trees. Uh, that, that is the type of work is being done in other countries. And finally, uh, in our lab in Nagpur, these are the molecular diagnostic tools that we have developed for the target pathogens, like for CTB, we have developed PCR duplex, real-time LAMP and RPA. These are the different techniques we have developed for CTB. Similarly, for greening also, we have developed these five techniques. And for mosaic, we have developed PCR, real-time and, and duplex PCR. For ring spot, these are the techniques like PCR, duplex, real-time and LAMP-based techniques we have developed. And so these are the techniques we have developed is available in our institute. And these techniques we are using for implementing Badood certification program at our institute level. And now this is the future work that we, we propose and we plan to develop low cost, easy to use diagnostic kit for all five citrus viruses and for on-site application and also for multiplexing. It is a target. And in fact, in this work, uh, Dr. Krishna Reddy, he's leading, a national, he's leading a national project and we are working along with Dr. Krishna Reddy, our, many of our friends working in many other institutes working in this project and in citrus also we are working. And then, in, then the implementation of region specific because the around three lakhs planting material we are developing at our institute. But as a country, there is a demand of more than 80 lakhs planting material. Uh, so in order to make available the virus free planting material, there is a need to implement region specific Badood certification program in, in different uh, citrus growing states of the country. And there is a need for networking with local state agriculture universities, KBKs or central university or state government. As I told you earlier, uh, that we have developed this technique. And now I appeal to the persons working in those uh, regions or state use that we are free, we are ready to do networking with you. And if you're really interested to to implement the region specific, we join with us, we are ready to join with you. So that the farmers of different citrus growing bales, they can have the access of quality planting material in, in different regions. This is about, about the develop, uh, control aspect. And then similarly, developing of novel, we, have, we are also developing, try, targeting to develop novel therapeutics that is inhibitor molecules for citrus gaining control that we are already working in last eight years. And hopefully we hope that in near future, we'll come up with good results on that. And then another aspect, for example, I told you, I told you that 2S albumin protein, it is around 12.5 kilo Dalton protein obtained from pumpkin seeds. It has an innovative effect. Now we are, we are planning, we are thinking that, that the gene which is responsible to produce 2S albumin protein, that whether we can use that to produce transgenic citrus plant that can express directly. Or in another, this is an, another example, that beta caryophyllin gene of guava that releases the volatile substances. And that is in fact, uh, that works as a repellent to the citrus seal vector. So this is also an, another target that also can be used for, uh, to develop transgenic citrus plant in the future. So these are the different areas we, we plan to work in future in collaboration with our, our colleagues from IHE Bangalore, Dr. Krishna Reddy, in IRI, Dr. Barnwal, Dr. Kajal Biswas, and in IIT Rurki with uh, Dr. A.K. Sharma. And this is about the collaborators. And this is the people, those who worked in, with me in our lab for last uh, so many years. And this is Balaji, Sumit, Ashish, and Manal, they have also already finished their PhD uh, after working on citrus virology in our lab. And Balaji is now continuing his work on citrus pathogen in, in US, in Florida. And same thing is true with Manali. She is also working, continuing her work on, on citrus getting in Florida and in University of Florida. All four have completed their finish at their PhD. Then Sumit and Asis, they are working in India in different very good positions as a lecturer and a scientist in, in, in different organizations. And presently, that is Datta, Sunil, Amol, Mugendo, and Thanasri. These are the five people working in our lab and in our lab in different schemes. And in fact, they are working very hard 
uh, so that you can come up with good results, some solutions to, for the farmers of the citrus growers. With this, I'm through. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ghosh. It was a very exhaustive presentation, which we have we witnessed very nice talk. And it's next to Dr. R. Selvarajan, who made a presentation on the last 24. So this is also in the same line of talk. And this is also another exhaustive presentation. Very nice. So thank you very much, Dr. Rose. Here, let's proceed to the question and answer session. Here, few uh, questions we have seen uh, put by Sukumar Devnath, the, the protein of his, uh, Even one question I have seen from Dr. R. K. Jain, he he was our former head of the division of plant pathology and also uh, dean uh, PG school IRI. So uh, I would request Dr. Arkejan, would you like to uh, this uh, talk? I, I I can allow to speak. Yes. Sir, uh, Dr. Jain, sir, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Hello. Sorry. Can you hear oh. me? Yes, yeah, sir. yes, sir. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to congratulate Dr. Ghosh for Thank making you, a nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, in fact, he has given an overview of uh, the various diagnostics which have been developed for citrus viruses and virus-like pathogens. Indeed, an excellent presentation, but uh, I think it would have been more purposeful and more useful if we had concentrated on its application part and how he had made use of these diagnostics for Budwood certification program. And subsequently, during the last 20 years, when they have distributed these various uh, certified planting material, what has been the impact? I think uh, that is what is uh, ultimately the, our goal. You know? Thank you so much. And uh, thank, you, thank you, sir. And uh, what happened that uh, <clears throat> I have I have I have mentioned because time due to lack of uh, time I didn't talk in detail about the certification program, but I mentioned in a slide that that in Badu certification program what exactly in one of course in one slide I have mentioned that what exactly we are doing, and in our institute right. that every year sir we are producing about three to three point five lakhs planting material, and what we did yeah. initially. We have identified horticulturally superior that has the huge potential of horticulture parameters like wood floors quality and loose uh, and tight skin. These are some of the horticulture parameters we are identifying and then taking the sample from the field and then we are testing it by using all the developed techniques like PCR and anti PCR technique. As soon as we find that in a field it is plant is free from this major pathogen or five target pathogen, we are immediately protecting the plant. The, in the field condition and side by side we are taking a set of the bud sticks in our institute and we are developing the mother plant in a protected condition and uh, in fact I I, I I could have shown 10 more slides or 15 slides on that but I finished it only one side and those mother plants we are protecting in the in our in our, in our control environment free from insects and those in a very close spacing those mother plants we are not using to take fruits but using it only as uh, to take bud sticks and in close spacing because every year we are taking the bud stick so automatically there is a tremendous pruning so we can accommodate more plants in close spacing in the field protected foundation block and at the same time uh, we are also two sets of the mother plant which is certified and tested free from this graft transmission pathogen two sets are maintaining uh, in the and we are using it as a source of uh, as a source of science material for commercial propagation, and uh, but as I told you, sir, I appreciate that. As I told you, that as a big country like India, there is a need of more than 80 lakhs planting material every year for new plantation as well as replantation within the existing existing orchard. So there is a, for example, if we talk about the northeast, uh, and there is a need to uh, need a collaboration with the people working in the northeast because that is Kasi Mandarin. And similarly, if you talk about Kindo in, in Punjab and Haryana and in, in, in western part of Maharashtra or Mosambi. So there is, there is a need to replicate what exactly we are doing at our institute for Badwood certification program so that 
the certified virus free plants of all major citrus commercial cultivars that can be made available this is really very important and in fact uh, there should be a, a thrust from the government to implement region specific badu certification program so that this certification program can be made successful in all major citrus growing states so that the farmers of those particular states they can have the access of quality plant material which is the backbone of the of the citrus industry which is citrus industry thank yeah, you dr gosh yeah thank you dr gosh thank you so much Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And I have mentioned my email. I have mentioned my email and mobile. Any, any, anyone is interested from those uh, citrus growing beds? Any scientist or uh, KBK or state anyone? Because our institute are encouraging to have a collaboration so that the technology and standardized technique that we have developed that can be that can be utilized simultaneously in all these places. So we have free. My email number I have given. You are most welcome to to contact me so that we will be very happy. Uh, to collaborate with you and to implement and to replicate our techniques in other places because ultimately farmers they should get the benefit of the techniques that we have developed yeah. thank you those uh, can you see uh, the bottom of your uh, this uh, panel question and answer yeah there we have seen total 11 yeah. questions yeah there is a there is a there is a question that many times it's difficult to differentiate between citrus and its symptom with How to differentiate? Uh, it's filled by visual expression. Yeah, there is a question by Paul Katoch. There is a question: How to differentiate between greening symptom with nutrient deficiency? In the field condition, many times this deficiency symptom is is um, is confusing with greening symptom. Uh, in that case. you see if it is if it is because of uh, if, it, if it is because of this uh, deficiency symptom you can see that uh, this is uniformly distributed in both the sides of the leaf and moreover uh, many times there is a 